Hello, welcome to the basement. You might have seen a few episodes ago, we had a bit of a smoky mishap. I was using a power supply and, well, all the magic smoke came out. This is the unit here, and today we're going to see if we can pull it apart and see what actually went wrong, because I've only got a couple of these and I need this to work. So as you can see, I've written a comprehensive list of what went wrong with this. The smoke came out. So um, if you don't want smoke to come out of any of your projects, you should actually go to PCBWay. As well as being the kind sponsor for this video, PCBWay are your one-stop shop for everything to do with your electronic projects. They do 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, a range of different PCBs from surface mount, through hole mount, whatever you need. They have a range of projects you can pick from, from their project library, or you could just have them develop your own custom PCB. For all your PCB needs, Check out PCB Way, kind sponsor of today's video. Right, so here we have the unit. And um, cosmetically, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Has a little bit of uh, some white paint spots or something on it. We'll see if we can clean them up later. But um, I think really the big challenge is going to be how do we pull this thing apart? Um, there's no visible screws. Uh, there's nothing hidden behind here that I can feel. And. Um, I think we're going to have to break it apart and then maybe either glue it back together or find some way of fixing it back together once we've pulled it apart. So I'll get a few tools and we'll start hacking at it and seeing if we can get this thing apart. So I've got these metal spudges and um, hopefully they're going to work to pry this thing open. It's going to be um, quite a challenge and I dare say it will damage the case but we really um, don't have much choice. It's interesting to note that when it did let the smoke out, the computer kept running, and so I don't know if the computer was running on a little bit of battery that it had, or if the power supply was still putting out the correct voltage. Uh, I'm a bit hesitant to plug it in and find out if it's still working, just based on the fact that all that smoke came out. I don't really want to damage it further or do any other damage. I'd rather try and get it fixed if we can. So let's see if we can get this thing open. Okay, we seem to have got the spudger in. And it's making cracky noises, so we've, uh, we've broken the seal, I suppose. Ah. Well, we've lost the little um, tab. Let's see if we can find that. Okay, good news. Um, found it. And it doesn't appear to be snapped, so we should be able to get that back in once we get the case back together. You can see along here that it's actually, the plastic's broken, that must be where it has been glued together. But I, I'm pretty confident that um, we can get this apart and get it back together again and it's still gonna look okay. So we'll keep trying. Got it. We have it open. And uh, I can really smell it now. <laughs> I mean, it smelled bad when it let that smoke out, but now it smells really bad. Um, you can see on the on the lid here, there's some of this, uh, I don't know what that is. It's sort of baked on there. Uh, it's, it's some sort of gooey stuff. Um, right, and we've got a bunch of components in here. Don't ask me what they do, but what I'm looking for is something that looks burnt. So given where that marking is on the case, it was above this section here, and you can see that there's something going on with this thing, and there's a bit of melting on this bit of plastic shielding here. So let's have a look further at what this thing is and uh, see if it's a replaceable item, and we can get this thing working again. Okay, so it appears that this metal shielding here is soldered onto these three points to kind of keep it in place and it passes through this plastic shielding I'd like to get this plastic shielding off because it's sort of in the way I don't really want to break it off um, but maybe if we just cut it in some places we can we can get the bit that we need off um, without desoldering this whole metal shielding so let's have a look at that well I've just bent that shielding back down out of the way 
and we can get this um, plastic shielding sort of bent down out of the way. Let me clean all the weird crud off there and um, we can have a closer look at this thing. Okay, I'm going to need to desolder these. I should have just done that to start with and then wouldn't have had to bend it um, because it's obviously in the way of that uh, capacitor thing that we need to get. So let's desolder these three points, get the shielding off, get the plastic shielding off and start taking that capacitor out. plastic shielding. I'll give that a proper clean. And here we've got the bottom of the circuit board. So there's a few surface mount resistors and things here. Uh, where's our problem child? That one there. So there and there I think. And uh, we'll desolder those and see if we can get this thing off. Hey, got it. Here it is, the thing that caught fire. So, it's looking pretty sad. Um, I'm not sure what it is or how to find another one, but um, I might do a bit of Googling and see if I can figure out uh, if my local store has one of these things and we'll put a new one in. Okay, so I've done a bit of searching around um, and I've sort of been Googling the different numbers and I think I've found it it's been a bit awkward because it broke apart when I was pulling it off and um, and so some of these numbers have kind of disappeared um, but if I sort of put it back together we can whoops we can see <laughs> we can see that this one here says two times 4700 pf and I assume that stands for picofarads um, and here I managed to find the piece that broke off and that was a Z. So, I can't get it now. So PZB300MC, that's the part number. Um, these numbers here are sort of relevant, um, but apparently they stand for the different operating temperatures it will handle. So what I saw here was 0.15 microfarads times two, that's actually X2, which means that this is a safety capacitor. I'm learning all sorts of new things today. Um, anyway, long story short, good news is I have managed to find it on Mouser. So I will order this and hopefully it'll get here within a few weeks and we can finish this project off. So here's our dud component and harnessing the power of video, it's now a week later and we've got the new component. Okay, so let's uh, put the new one in, put it all back together and see if it works. Now this shield also acts as, I think, a ground plate because you can see the ground pins soldered through it. So we'll do the same thing again. So what I'll do is plug it in and throw a multimeter on this end and see if we're getting 24 volts. Okay, so I'm slightly nervous about plugging it in. I don't quite know where to hold it to, um, to plug it in. I don't really want to get shocked. Um, maybe if I hold it with the handle of a screwdriver and close my eyes. Hi, I just want to interrupt this broadcast to bring a special message. This is my serious face. This video is to be viewed for entertainment purposes only. Do not treat it as a guide to fix your own power supply. Don't try this at home. You're dealing with mains voltage and it's very lethal. All right, back to our programming. Okay, right, nothing's exploded. No sparks. That would be nothing at all. Look, um, what I might do is plug this into 
the computer and uh, see if we are getting something that way. Okay, so I've got this clamshell iBook. Now, out of all the laptops I have that run on 24 volt power, this is probably the one I would be least upset if something happened to it. Uh, it has a broken USB port and a few things that need doing to it. Um, the other ones that I have run, that run a 24 volt are in excellent condition and I would cry if they blew up. So let's, uh, let's just see first if it turns on with battery. No, nothing. So it's completely dead. So we'll plug in the power and if it fires up and we don't have any smoke coming out of this, I'd say that's a job well done. Okay, moment of truth. I'm not sure if some lights are supposed to come on, but let's hit the power button and see what happens. Okay, that's a fat lot of nothing. Okay, I've spent a couple of hours with the multimeter trying to look around and see what else might be wrong here. Um, this is the voltage rectifier, which changes it from AC to DC. And I was finding I wasn't getting what I was expecting on the other side, like I was expecting um, DC current, and I was just getting nothing. And I have found that there's nothing coming in on, um, I removed it and tested it, it's tested fine, but there's actually nothing coming in on this pin here. And that pin connects to this pin of the resistor that we replaced. So I'm wondering if actually when this resistor blew, it might have um, damaged the tracer. So I'm gonna uh, see if I can put a bodge wire through there and, and get our AC current to here. And then we'll, we'll test what we get out of these and hopefully we're getting a DC current out of the other end of the rectifier. Uh, we now have, um, We've got 240 volts or 236 across the input. And if we look at our voltage rectifier, we now have the same across our voltage rectifier, which means our voltage rectifier should be outputting between here and here DC, and we're getting 320 odd volts DC which is further than we were before. So now all we have to do is test our 24 volt side down here, uh, which is this pin, uh, I think is the earth, this terminal here, and this one here is, oh look at that, 24 volts. So now I'm confident that this thing is outputting 24 volts again to the barrel plug. Okay, so I've just tidied that up a bit um, before we put the cover back on, shortened it and made it uh, fit just a little bit nice, uh, nicer, a bit more flush in there. So when we put that cover on, it's not going to obscure anything. So without gluing it back together, I don't think these are gonna stay in because as soon as I let it go, they just pop out. But I don't wanna glue it together yet because I don't know if it works. So let's, um, uh, what should we do? I'll get some tape, I'll tape it together and do a bit of a ghetto fix. And then when I can confirm it works, um, I'll look at gluing the seam back together. Good as new. That is a good sign. Let's hit a button and see what happens. Great, so you can see uh, Mac OS 9.2 booting up on this little clamshell, which uh, I do need to fix the USB port, but that's another video, I think. Okay, I'm going to try this white glue. Oh, 
Okay, so we'll let that dry and we'll have a look at it tomorrow. Hopefully uh, when we pull the tape off, it doesn't fall apart. So let's wait till tomorrow and see how we go. So there you have it, the culprit. The reason why this thing smoked and smelt bad, still smells a bit bad, uh, but it's working. We found another one of those capacitors. We've got it into this thing. There was that other issue where there was no power getting to the rectifier. So we narrowed that down to a broken trace, which would have happened when the original capacitor blew. So uh, a little bit of wire to circumvent that and she's working again. So I'm pretty happy. This, I've only got two of these. This is the second one I've got. And um, it's good to have because there's, um, there's a lot of these older Macs that take 24 volts and um, they're getting harder and harder to find these, especially in working condition. Uh, like this one is again the only issue is the little foot that folds out that you wind the cord around uh, it doesn't want to stay in there anymore the other one stays in there sort of um, but this one just keeps popping out but I can live with that for a working power supply I'll keep that uh, just in case I can get it to work again but uh, as for now I'm happy job done you've been on the basement see you next time